Presented by Private Internet Access. Welcome back to We're All Satoshi. I'm Rick Falkwinger, talking today to Max Kordek from Lisk. You're building sidechains that run JavaScript. The token space right now, the blockchain space, it is glowing white hot. The last, thing I, the last time I saw something as glowing white hot as this was during the dot-com boom 17 years ago. There, were, there was a bunch of comedians then making fun of the situation called Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie. Did you have a chance to listen to them? No, never. I mean, I was they, like eight or so. <laughs> they, they were making fun of the situation, kind of like The Onion is making fun of reality today. Like, mm. today you can often find more truth in The Onion than in your regular news media. Because The Onion expresses in humor what regular news media is not allowed to say. Mm. And this band of comedians, Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie, they were a little bit like that. Today we have ICOs. Back then you had venture capital money and so they had this sketch called the rise and fall of an internet startup and because of the nature of the topic they were able to do the entire story in real time over the course of the sketch lasting five minutes okay that's crazy yeah but but it was crazy times like mm -hmm. that they had this thing where they would call for capital uh, venture capital money and they would impersonate a, uh, an answering machine saying, if you, if you have a request for billions and billions of dollars, please press one now. And it was, it was just like that. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, someone, someone said, you know, maybe we should cash out while we're still ahead. And it was like, nah, <laughs> okay, we're broke. Yeah, yeah, crazy. So it's like the pace of this entire thing is glow is coming to the same you're getting the same kind of community feeling like every if you're looking at San Francisco right now six out of five people are looking to do an ICO mm. yeah so what do you, what would you what would you say to them mm. um, I would say like ICOs are definitely the future of financing startups because it brings like direct liquidity like if we see like I meet quite a few VCs recently and they all say like whatever they're um, putting time in which is not blockchain related right now they're bored of it mm. because once you are like infected by blockchain you're infected you know mm -hmm. um, and for me it just brings so many advantages like you don't have to speak to like 30 40 VCs just to get some funding you can just present your idea to anyone in the world everyone become becomes a VC um, some people say like ICOs are demo uh, democratizing um, investing and for me it's true because I mean I was 24 I did an ICO people believed in my idea and I succeeded you know with no mm -hmm. real track record in the past and I'm working my ass off to just deliver and it's the same for my whole team so here's a problem as well like how do you ensure that an ICO team is working their asses off mm -hmm. in the future like some ICOs, um, or the founders of them at least, um, are getting instant revenue or money or shares back like in the millions and then they're not incentivized anymore. Um, but I think definitely it's a big opportunity for entrepreneurs to use ICOs, um, but I still think there's a long way to go. Also in the size, like you said, it's, it's heating up. But we're mm. still so far away like from the top of, oh, absolutely. of the dot com. Bubble. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I think this space can grow like one hundred X more and we're still okay, you know, because suddenly everyone can participate. Yep. And this this thing you bring up where people see a successful ICO as the goal and then have all of this money and don't know what to do with it. I mean, this was a problem in the VC times as well. You saw so many startups that had a successful venture capital pitch as the end goal or even had an exit as an end goal mm. like yay we're celebrating we just sold 40 percent of our stock or a controlling interest of our stock how can that be something that's really a success that you're no longer in control of your vision yeah that's that, that, that way i would argue that icos turn the leaves completely because 
when you're when you're pitching to a, to a, a um, an angel investor or a venture capitalist, they will come back to you with this thick a document and give you one hour to decide where to, whether to sign it or not. Mm. A little exaggerated, but not very much. Mm. On an ICO, you set the terms. Exactly. How does that change the picture? I mean, um, like you said, the ICO is a goal. It is like completely bullshit and exact. Uh, sorry about my wording here, but I think this is like one of the biggest problems right now that people are doing ICOs just for the sake of doing an ICO. They don't really want to build great products. They just mm. want to be part of this quick money grab. I mean, in China last year, there were like over 60 ICOs. None of them delivered. That's why China <laughs> introduced these bans, you know. If they would have delivered great software, great products, then China would have decided maybe otherwise. But I also see a big problem in like just the ramp up because an mm. ICO for me is like seed, series A, B and C in one. Because you can't, or maybe you can, but you shouldn't do a second ICO for the same token. Um, that means you, or the community, all the investors or donators in some, in some cases, suddenly expect to, or expect from you to grow your company from day one to day two, from two people to 100 people. Mm. They, they have so high expectations because often these investors are not very experienced in investing. Um, that it puts a lot of pressure on you and I think many entrepreneurs crumble under this, under this pressure because you can't build a, pro, uh, a company, a good product overnight. It needs time and at least you see it as well. We needed one and a half years to set up a proper legal model or a legal foundation behind all this business. Mm. Um, we needed time to find the best people all over the world to build it. So it takes time, you know. and Sometimes investors are very short-term orientated, at least in the ICO space, mm -hmm. um, because in the VC space you can't be it, um, that they're just flip-flopping from one ICO to another. And that's why this huge amount of investment sum comes, like, or comes into existence, but most people just flip-flopping and don't really hold the token and believe in it, right? I think right. that's a big so, problem. So whereas a VC would hold a controlling interest or controlling share of a, of a company in order to nurture it to profitability and sell it off at a 10x profit. Mm. You see people in the ICO space basically not even wanting to control a company, but just selling off what they bought at a profit, like if it were no interesting than an Apple. Mm, yeah, I mean, someone who holds the token Mm. has like the best interest that the token goes up, right? Right. So you see it really when Lisk, for example, is going up, mm. everyone loves my interviews. But when it's going down, everyone is saying, what the fuck is he talking about? You yeah. know, like really, everyone hates it then. And um, this is just like financially interested. It's like everyone is just looking at the money and everyone just wants to do an ICO. But for me, there's so much more behind it. Like being able to build a great product with money which was collected in a decentralized way with no single point of failure you know so yeah. there can't be like one investor who suddenly shoots around and says oh no you have to do it like that else i gonna withdraw my money or whatever you know um this time you just got the money you got the trust and you just have to deliver on your promises but if people don't deliver then i see really black times for this industry as a whole yeah i can absolutely absolutely relate to what you're saying with this Sometimes everybody wants to talk to you and sometimes people think you're completely out there. I yeah. used to be in politics. I, I put people in the European Parliament on a shoestring budget. People told me it couldn't be done. I was literally re rewriting the playbook on how things could be done. But the same thing there as in when I started this, people told me that I'm destroying my career. I'm destroying my entire life. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. When on, on the uh, election victory night, like my phone was ringing the entire next day and uh, there was literally teams of TV crews that were filming the other teams of TV crews that were filming me. <laughs> yeah. So this idea of when you're hot, you're hot and when you're not, you're absolutely out there. That's not just in business. I, I think that's, that tells you something, whether you believe in your product and whether you can believe in a long-term mission to deliver something mm. or whether you're just chasing the next 
inve short term investment as we were talking about. And in a way, I think this ties back to what you were saying about the Chinese ICOs. Like there are so many people just hunting for, I don't know, looking for their own shadow or something like that with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. You're forgetting this community building because that's how I delivered on the, on the political mission. It was all about building community. The same thing you've been echoing through this entire conversation. Like it's all about building that sense of changing the world together, wouldn't yeah, you say? Exactly. And I think for that, these ICO startups which are evolving have to be extremely transparent. I think transparency is key in the blockchain space because you hold money of thousands of people and they all want to know what's going on. And for example, we are publishing transparency reports in terms of finance. We are like always posting updates to our blog, what's going on, to our Twitter and Facebook channels. Um, for example, just recently we were in Asia and we were treating picture after picture of what we are doing. Mm. And I think that's pretty unique in the it blockchain is. space, like in terms of companies, because yeah. Microsoft or Google, when they started, they didn't do it. I mean, they yeah. didn't have really the infrastructure. Not so just say in yet. the blockchain space, in all of business. Yeah. And this is exactly what the Pirate Party did as well, which set us completely aside. Mm. As in, it builds trust. Yeah, exactly. But it's it also shows that the community is a very important aspect. And mm. you can basically say community equals investors here because everyone who holds the token is automatically also an investor. But at the end, he is mainly a user of your platform. At least that should be the case because especially Lisk, we are a utility token. Mm. That means we want that people are using our platform later on. They should not only hold the token, right? And for all these ICOs which are popping up, I think this is really important that they bring utility into the sector, that mm -hmm. blockchain technology is being used in the future. It could be all hype and no one is using it, but where would be the benefit? I think this technology really has like the advantages and the benefits to be used for so many great things. And it's up to us entrepreneurs to build these great things and to make the user experience so good that everyone can really use it. I think that's a great point. And you're saying the word utility here. Let me jump subjects a little bit about what's happening with Bitcoin right now mm -hmm. in current affairs. There's Bitcoin has had declining usability for most of this year, as mm -hmm. in it went from being okay-ish in terms of fees and confirmation times to being absolutely ridiculous, as in I was paying for a burger the other week, I think, here in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And for a 20 euro burger, I was paying two euros in transfer fees. And if you're trying to, un if you're trying to bank the unbanked, if, you if you're trying to br bring something, financial services, financial utility to the masses, you're not going to pe bring people in who live on $2 a day if you're charging $2 per transaction. So there has been this faction wars that are outright toxic mm. in Bitcoin, which, like it or not, is a kind of the mother of blockchain, mother of blockchains. We don't know if, it, if it'll go the way of MySpace and Friendster, but it still has a certain dominance. Mm. So what's your take on this community fracture? Yeah, so first of all, disclaimer, like I'm a one megabyte block blogger, blocker or however you call it. I fully believe in the Bitcoin core team. Um, and I think there is consensus in the network, but there has to be also social consensus in everything we are doing, right? It's a decentralized movement. And I think these wars, these fights, these like poisonous uh, conversations, they have to exist in order to achieve the best outcome. Everyone has different like visions or ideas mm. and everyone should fight for their ideals or for their like perfect vision of the future of Bitcoin. And what, out, what comes out of it is, in my opinion, the best case, if the majority decides it. If, so how um, does the majority decide? I think the majority definitely decides for Bitcoin Core. And we see it. I mean, there was Bitcoin Cash, mm -hmm. but it's like, for me, not relevant anymore. Um, there's now Bitcoin Gold popping up on the 25th of October. I okay, think. I haven't even checked the date. Yeah, so it's 10, 10 days out. Yeah, ten. Yeah, something like that. And um, there is like, for me, it's already 
like not very successful there's so much hate against it and then of course there's now the big next thing 2x you yeah, know um, sometime mid-november we don't know exactly when yeah and for me it's again like a non-event like it just makes more money for bitcoin holders but that's it i mean everyone is selling their altcoins right now to get into bitcoin to be part of these it looks forms. like it doesn't it like bitcoin is the only green green tick yeah exactly and i just saw a very funny scene from uh, spongebob squarepants okay. where like this mr krabs i don't know the english name for him uh has this burger place right and next to his burger place he built exactly the same burger place mm -hmm. and then the interviewer asked him why are you doing this and he just asked for money <laughs> so he has two burger places next to each other exactly the same but he's just doing it for the money and for me, it's, it feels like many people are doing it once for money, but also for power. Like they want to be or establish themselves as the leaders of this probably parad paradigm shift of the future, right? And mm. of course, everyone is struggling to get in. So you have like some uh, Chinese miners trying mm. to do it with Bitcoin Cash. You have some other miners trying to do it with Bitcoin Gold. Now you have like these more corporate um, people trying to do it with um, Bitcoin 2x or however okay. you call it. So who's fighting for utility in this? Mm -hmm. So like. I think in terms of utility what you meant like fees are getting higher that means utility goes down because it's um, a bit harder or not maybe harder but a bit more uncomfortable to use it if you're paying so many fees. Well there are less use cases Yeah. Mm -hmm. or less uh, business exactly. defensible cases. Yeah. Um, I think like the Bitcoin ledger itself the blockchain is just there for settlement. I truly believe like in payment channels or in side channels being established for like let's say one online shop and they can do as many transactions as, as they want for minimal fees and at one point they want to settle it back to be like 100% secure again to the Bitcoin main chain and for that they are like spending two dollars. I think that's a good way. Um, also you have to like just ask yourself this is a worldwide database being stored of tens of thousands of computers if you write something in it it's mm. there forever and we already talked about apps which are running for forever in the future right um, so Bitcoin will probably exist forever from now on as well likely yeah. yeah and this means every transaction will stay there forever it means it's just growing and how much is this space worth I mean for two dollar sounds still fair to me but then you should have to ask yourself what are you using it for do, do you use right. it to buy a hamburger or do you want to use it to send your family in china or africa some money or do you just use it to have a store of value and for all these financial transactions you're referring to side chains to payment channels and so on like right what saw, lightning is building. right i saw a quote somewhere that in term in terms of transaction fees you're paying for all of this, but that might not be relevant because you might, might not get what matters for you when you're paying is how much utility you get out of it, mm. not what costs you're causing down the road. So this is a way, one way of externalizing the costs, admittedly. I saw one, one in very interesting quote, which was that if Bitcoin gets $100 transaction fees, it will still be useful mm. to somebody. Mm. And that somebody might not be you. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And what is one hundred dollar then at that point? It could be like zero point zero 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 one Bitcoin, right? Um, but I think like if you're looking back to the internet, like I remember when I was like maybe six years old, mm. I was on some cooking page with uh, recipes, recipes, recipes. I think it's the name. Um, how to cook some certain dishes, okay? Mm. And I was paying like two euro for every minute because it was through a phone line, right. you know. And it was expensive I remember and those. the internet became cheaper as we moved on. So why is that? Probably because of like technologically or technologically pro progresses or mm. breakthroughs making it more available and cheaper to construct and, and build it general, and yeah. competition. Um, and we see the same in Bitcoin. We see more technologically mm. um, or technologic in being introduced to the sector. We see more competition with other cryptocurrencies or tokens so I think this will lead to a way where we have a system which is very secure which is decentralized and which is so like so cheap to use that it has real utility and most of that will come through competition 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I we think agree, so. We agree fully there. Yeah. Um, I mean, Bitcoin is moving really, really slow. And at some point it has to because, I mean, it's like the first. It's like the gold. People always refer back to it as the secure chain, which has to move slow then, of course. Um, but competition, which yeah. is moving faster, it will, is. I think, in my opinion, in a few years, yeah. if, jump I mean, over. If it hits a ceiling, I mean, Six Degrees gave way to Friendster, gave way to MySpace, gave way to Facebook. Facebook looks like it's hit the ceiling of the world population. I mean, mm. it has two billion users mm. now. There's no, uh, there's no next order of magnitude to go to. But if Bitcoin can't hit the next order of magnitude, some technology will. Exactly. Yeah. I, I fully believe in Lightning, that Lightning will be sufficient for millions of users, but maybe not for billions. And then we have to ask ourselves, is blockchain the right technology to be used by billions of people? Or maybe do we have like centralized hubs, which are then referring back to a blockchain? I don't know really, but I think blockchain is a really hard topic to get and a really hard yeah. technology to build and to scale. Uh, I think this is one of the major topics since years, scaling yep. blockchains. It is. And it is. We, we might have to rethink how to use blockchains. Yeah, let's build it and compete. Yes. I mean, um, with Lisk, we're just enabling developers to build blockchains to increase experiments. And I think out of experiments, some crazy things will occur or will happen out mm. of them. And I hope that some geniuses in these worlds which are far more intelligent than I am will build like the future of blockchains where um, they really crack or which, where they really discover what a blockchain is good for. I think it's not good for just sending money to buy a cup of coffee. I think it's good for other things. There's a really interesting anecdote there. Let's come back to that in the next segment.